fish camps are distinct. So they're small, family-friendly restaurants. Nothing fancy about them, very simple decor. They cater to a largely blue-collar clientele. They're marked by having both saltwater and seafood uh, offerings, and then the trinity of hush puppies, french fries, and coleslaw. The fish camps were a place where you, you could go and feed your whole family and not blow your whole paycheck. And the portions were always generous. First and foremost, it's good. <laughs> it's good food. I mean, nothing beats a, a hush puppy fresh out of the, out of the grease. But it's tied to, to the textile mills that were so important to the South. They, they were vital to these communities and they shaped the culture of the region. You know, the, the food at the fish camp has a direct relationship to, to the mill workers and what they wanted and what they ate and what they were, they were used to. The, the first fish camps were really just spots on, the, on the, the banks of the river, the Catawba River in this case. Mill workers would, on their days off, would, would uh, go fishing. A number of entrepreneurs would set up little camps on the banks where they would clean your fish and fry it for you and, and make hush puppies and french fries for you to have with it. And you'd sit out and have a little picnic. One of the earliest ones in Gaston County, North Carolina, was run by a fellow named Luther Lineberger who worked for the textile mill in Cramerton, North Carolina. Luther was known around the mill to be a, be a really good cook, and he would be out on the bank some days frying fish for other mill workers who were, who were out fishing. That was so successful that Luther decided to open his own spot, and in 1948 he opened Lineberger's Fish Camp a little ways off from the, from the banks of the river. So you know, Luther was a mill worker, the folks fishing on the fishing banks were, were, were mill workers, and the clientele of the fish camps tended to be textile mill workers. Because of, of that connection, some traditions came up. The culture of the community becomes intertwined with the mills. I don't want to romanticize it, it was painful and pleasant, <laughs> hard, loud work. But there was a community, a camaraderie, and working at the mill meant that you belonged to a community, that you belonged to a family. I myself, I, I grew up in Gaston County, North Carolina, and my dad worked for the textile mills. And the textile mills tended to pay on Thursdays, and so fish camps were usually open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I remember many Thursday nights we would go to Stowe's Fish Camp because dad got paid, and this was our, our outing, and so we'd go out to, to uh, Stowe's and we'd go out uh, to eat, and, and I'm the smallest member of my family, so it was quite a, <laughs> you know, quite a feast that we would have. So you're, you're gonna order your entree, and it's gonna be whole or half order, right? So whole order is huge, <laughs> and half order is still pretty big. <laughs> you have a choice, a uh, filet of flounder or whole flounder, Salt and pepper catfish, perch. I'm not even sure what a perch is. You can get shrimp. This is all fried. A, a big giant basket of french fries, hush puppies, and coleslaw. And uh, sweet tea, of course, with, with every meal. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that was pretty much it. When the meals were at their, their height, the fish camps were, were at their height one point, if you look at maybe a five mile radius, there would be at least half a dozen or more. And if you go out a little further, probably another dozen. And so when the mills started dying off, partly because of outsourcing, a lot of folks in the area suffered as these mills picked up and, and left. Curiously, the decline of the mills has sort of paralleled the decline of the fish camps as well. The, the number of fish camps has dwindled compared to what it was, say, 20, 30 years ago. It has created a, a generational split. That said, they're there still, and you know they're they're serving the same uh, items that they that they they always did. Twin Tots is pretty much a typical fish camp. You know what what you see there is this kind of thing you would see or would have seen uh, across the street and around the corner. 
When you talk to folks about their their memories going as a family to the fish camp, these are warm memories, they're lovely memories for a lot of people. Um, you know, home, family, food, feasting, just that whole experience. You know, when we, we break bread together, we, we, we come together, and this is a place where a lot of, you know, small town, blue collar southerners came together, formed their, their communities, they, they formed their families, they, they uh, you know, checked up on each other, they, they got the latest gossip, but also shared their latest news. And it was, it's, it was a place for, for the community and for building a community, and building a community focused around really good food. Like much of history, it's worth uh, saving, it's worth honoring, it's worth remembering. Workman's Cafe to feed the working man. We went over the menu before we opened. Okay, okay, this is good, this is good. No, we can't.